Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising 144K, I'm Hydrogen Man. Before I begin guys, I'm not going to give you any medical advice, no medical claims, no claims for or against any product or products. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about Brown's gas versus molecular hydrogen. Why? Because there appears to be a massive amount of confusion about these two particular gases. If you want a full video, comment below. And I'll go over all the differences because I will tell you right now, they are not the same thing at all. In fact, the reason I think people are so confused about it because people keep messaging about it is because people try to pawn off Brown's gas as molecular hydrogen because of all the data behind molecular hydrogen. But again, they're not the same thing. They're actually not even close in a lot of ways, but we're gonna ask ChatGTP today and I'm gonna read to you the different things that it says because it's really quite amazing how accurate it is. So let's just get started. Uh, the first thing is, let's see, let's go down the list because I, I put a lot of questions here. First of all, scientific evidence, Brown's gas, is it helpful for health? And this is what I asked Chad GTP, and it basically says, while there are claims that inhaling or consuming Brown's gas to provide health benefits, it says these claims are largely anecdotal and lack substantial scientific evidence because guys there literally isn't any now before i keep going a lot of people think that when they see a study that shows that they're using oxygen and hydrogen they think that's brown's gas by the way that isn't the, you have to understand that when they do a study like that they're using they're using medical grade oxygen when you make brown's gas from some device especially devices that use chemicals like lye and sodium hydroxide that is not medical grade oxygen i hope people understand that and then hydrogen, same thing. It's not medical grade hydrogen, but in these studies they're using typically high grade, extremely pure medical grade hydrogen. And when you use those two gases separately, that's not the same as Brown's gas. Brown's gas has numerous other gases also. And the, they're, in my personal opinion, they're definitely not making medical grade oxygen or even hydrogen. But we'll get into that in a second because Chad GTP apparently knows that difference too, which I found very interesting. That's why I'm sharing this with you. So it says it's basically lacking um, any scientific evidence. Okay, let's move on. I did ask it, are there any dangers of inhaling Brown's gas? And it says uh, several dangers, actually. Uh, one is, it's, it goes into oxygen deprivation, but I'm not gonna talk about that one because that's like if you're in a room full with these gases, so that's another thing. But I will say that there might be, according to this data, dangers in inhaling extremely large amounts of these gases. Of course, that goes for a lot of things. Too much of anything, too much water can be bad for you. So you need to know your levels. That's very important. And purity is super important, but okay. And it says that it has uh, risks of it being explosive. Obviously, I think we know that. Brown's gas is highly flammable. If you make pure hydrogen correctly, and in a certain way where they use it medically, like in Japan, there's certain ways to make it where it's not flammable, by the way, which is very interesting, but that's a whole other conversation. So this is what Chad GTP says, lung damage. It says inhaling. So if you're using like Brown's gas with, that lacks purity, because it literally says prolonged exposure. This is why I keep talking about long-term usage. And I want people to understand, by the way, that this video is not to say things positive or negative, whether it's about Brown's gas or just pure hydrogen. This is all about trying to get you actual factual information. This is not about, I know that people are so opinionated on things this video is not about opinions, this, opinion, this video is about facts. So, okay, so it says um, prolonged exposure or inhalation of impure gas. This is what I found extremely interesting. The chat GTP immediately notices that purity is important and nobody seems to be talking about it. And so impure gas can increase the risk of lung injury. I've actually seen this happen to people. This is why I don't use Brown's gas anymore. I tried it in the past. It felt very dirty, very impure. It was using a chemical like Y to make it. And that ended up being a mistake that I personally made trying this stuff out. But it says, uh, so also the concentrations can cause damage to the lungs, also leading to respiratory issues. It also says lack of scientific evidence. See, back to that again, which is different than molecular hydrogen, which we'll get into. It says the inhaling of Brown's gas is not supported by substantial scientific evidence. It is simply relying on unproven claims using, this is interesting, using unregulated devices. Guys, this is huge. I can't believe Chad GDP knows this. Unregulated devices that can be risky and even potentially harmful to your health. Guys, I think that says volumes, but let's just keep moving on. In fact, 
You know what? Well, let me answer this question first because it's I, it's another one that I had asked. It says, what is a full list of gases created when you make Brown's guys? Because we're not talking medical grade oxygen, medical grade hydrogen, and that's it. What are the full gases? Well, it literally says the exact composition can vary depending on various factors during the process as far as the purity of materials, water, etc. And But the main gases that are going to be produced, yes, there's going to be hydrogen in there. Obviously, it's not pure. Oxygen, in my personal opinion, is not going to be medical grade oxygen. To make medical grade oxygen, you need certain type of equipment. A Brown's gas device, in my personal opinion, will not do that. Water vapor. There will be water vapor. Not that that's super good for you, but there's water vapor. And then it says trace impurities. Guys, this is another big one. This is why the equipment I use, I'm so specific about the equipment I use. It literally says small amounts of other gases may be present as impurities depending on the quality of the materials. This is why when people cheap out and try to make cheap equipment, this is the issue um, when doing hydrogen. These impurities can include, and so there's obviously different ones, they said nitrogen, carbon dioxide, or gases released from the electrodes or electrolyte. And a lot of people are using lye as the electrolyte, which is sodium hydroxide, which I think we all know is well, here, I'll tell you, let's get into it. Um, let's go into this question. I put, is inhaling lye after being bubbled through water safe? This is what ChatGTP says. It immediately says, no. Inhaling lye after bubbling through water is not safe. Lye, also known as sodium hydroxide, is a caustic substance that can cause severe damage to the respiratory system if inhaled. It is important to avoid inhaling lye or any other toxic substance. And then if it goes on to say, if you're exposed to it, contact your medical professional. Then I asked it, does bubbling lye through water filter out toxic gases? Because a lot of people believe that this does. In my personal opinion, I don't think it does, but this is what ChatGTP says. And remember, this AI system scouring the internet for information, and I find it to be incredibly accurate. It says, bubbling lye through water can help filter out some toxic gases by trapping them in the water. However, this method will not be sufficient to eliminate all toxic gases completely. That's in my personal opinion, the issue here. It says the effectiveness of filtration of the filtration process depends on the specific gases involved and their solubility in water. Additionally, lye itself is a caustic substance and can release toxic fumes when in contact with water. <laughs> I think this says a lot. So literally when it comes in contact with water, it appears that it's probably worse. But anyway, I'm not gonna, the, beyond that it says it's important to exercise caution when working with lye and other potential hazardous chemicals. And then it goes on to this whole thing about lye. Okay, uh, moving on, let's see. We already went to the scientific evidence, dangers of Brown's gas. Let's go to the next question I asked here. What is the difference between molecular hydrogen and Brown's gas? Well, first thing it goes into is, um, they're two, di they're two different forms of hydrogen is what it goes into. And guys, this is important because there's so many things out there that are not the same. Like people think hydrogen peroxide the same as molecular hydrogen. It's not. This is why you have to read the data and be educated and apparently not listen to what people tell you. You have to go read the data. That's what I've been doing for years. And that's the whole basis of this channel. Always trying to bring you the correct information rather than people's opinions. Now it goes on to say that there is a composition difference. Molecular hydrogen is pure hydrogen gas consisting solely of H2 molecules. So that's all it really is. Brown's gas, on the other hand, and I'm reading this straight from chat GTP, is a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen and in various propor uh, proportions and typically produced uh, through the electrolysis of water. Okay, typically, because um, it also depends. You can make it in many different ways. I really think that the materials matter, and even using an electrolyte like uh, lye definitely matters. I would never do it personally, and I did try it, but it was a mistake on my part. Okay, safety. Um, it does say molecular hydrogen is well-established safety profile when used at appropriate concentrations. I can't emphasize that enough either. The levels are really, really important. I'll do another video if you guys want to know more about that. Comment below. I won't go into that. But generally, it's safe for inhalation and consumption is what it says. And then it says Brown's gas. Well, I mean, this is literally a chat GTP saying Brown's gas, however, 
can potentially be hazardous due to its oxygen content. Wow, what a shocker, because I said this years ago, and I'm really impressed that it, that it caught this, and says, and the risks associated with and handling of a flammable gas mixture. I mean, obviously handling things that are flammable, but it's that oxygen in there that you would use regularly that could potentially pose a risk. And I'll, and I'll tell you why, not me, but chat GTP here. Let's see, it says research and evidence. Molecular hydrogen has been a subject of extensive scientific research in recent years, and a growing body of evidence suggests potential health benefits. Many studies have investigated the antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and therapeutic properties of molecular hydrogen. On the other hand, research on the health effects of Brown's gas specifically is more limited, and the existing scientific evidence supporting its health benefits is lacking. Guys, I haven't seen anything actually that really shows any real good data. In fact, I looked into contacting people in Japan who work with Brown's gas and I had questions and they literally sent me back the same thing. They said, we really haven't seen any medical efficacy. Like it's not even close to pure hydrogen. And why, you know, we can do a whole video on this, but one of the, th one of the important factors, there's numerous factors. One, I wouldn't want oxygen in my mixture. You don't want to inhale, you're already inhaling oxygen. You only want to use hot oxygen once in a while. We'll go over that with chat GTP, what it tells us about oxygen. But the important aspect of it is you want it to be able to penetrate deep into your cells, deep into the body. And the problem is, and I found it here on chat GTP, Brown's gas doesn't appear to be as permeable to, to the body. That's the reason I think it really, that's one of the reasons I think it doesn't work nearly as good. And the oxygen factor also. Now, all I can say is in the short term, there might be some benefit because there is some hydrogen in there but it's not the correct way, at least according to medical professionals, especially in Japan, who are the guys who figured all this out. But um, it goes on to say that it says administration. I don't know if we need to go into administration, but it says, we already talked about the evidence and how there's no evidence really for Brown's gas. Administration, it talks about molecular hydrogen is typically administered through like the gas for inhalation or hydrogen rich water consumption, or even through it says hydrogen infused therapies. It says Brown's gas due to its oxygen content, wow, I brought that up again, is not commonly used for inhalation or consumption in health applications, right there. It is primarily utilized in industrial processes such as welding or as a source of heat. Hmm, that's interesting, I didn't actually know that. Okay, what is, let's see here, I'm scrolling through the questions I had. Health benefits of molecular hydrogen. I'm not gonna go down this list, it's pretty huge, but I'll tell you, GTP says, there's a ton of scientific research. Um, I'll just give you some of the quick bullet points. Chad GTP says antioxidative properties, and it literally goes through a whole thing. It says things like molecular hydrogen is a potent antioxidant that can help combat oxidative stress by neutralizing harmful free radicals. It selectively targets and scavenges highly reactive oxygen species. It goes through this whole thing. Anyway, the next one says anti-inflammatory effects, and it has a whole explanation. Cellular signaling and signaling and gene expression goes through a ton of stuff. Remember. There's no evidence of Brown's gas being able to do this stuff. It's just that what I've seen out there and all the people who contact me, the reason there's so much confusion is because there's people out there taunting it that way. They're like, oh, Brown's gas is great. In fact, it's better. And I'm like, how can you go and say it's better when there's no evidence? That's unbelievable to me. But back to molecular hydrogen, neuroprotective. So there's a neuro uh, protection. So it says studies suggest that molecular hydrogen may have neuroprotective effects, potentially reduce the risk and severity of neurodegenerative diseases. Again, it goes blah, blah, blah. Metabolic and cardiovascular health. Again, goes into the data of that. Exercise, performance, and recovery. It goes into that. So there's just a lot of data, guys. And let's go into a little bit of the oxygen part because obviously chat GDP had concerns. I, I do too. And, and I just put, is inhaling supplemental oxygen daily good for you or dangerous? And it literally goes into how oxygen should basically only be used for indiv individuals with specific medical conditions that result in low blood oxygen levels, such as, and it goes into like COPD, severe asthma, respiratory disorders, lots of different things. However, it says in those cases, prescribed oxygen. Remember, prescription oxygen is high grade of purity, guys. It is not the same as bubbling up some oxygen with a machine that is using a chemical like light. It's not the same. You're not making medical grade oxygen. I hope people understand this. There's a lot of machines out there, even ones that don't use light, that do not make medical grade oxygen. I hope people understand this. Purity is everything in medicine, okay? So here we go. This goes on to say, okay, however, 
using supplemental oxygen without a medical need or without proper guidance can potentially be dangerous. It says oxygen is a highly reactive substance. This is a big deal, guys. Highly reactive and excessive exposure to con these high concentrations of oxygen can lead to various medical risks. So here's what it says. It says one, oxygen toxicity. So prolonged exposure to supplemental oxygen can damage the lungs and even other organs. This condition is known as oxygen toxicity and can cause several symptoms and then it goes into all that, including seizures, wow. Okay, let's scroll on to the next one. Fire hazard, okay, I think we all know it's flammable. Hey, be careful out there, it is dangerous. Oxygen supports combustion, making it highly flammable. I won't go into the whole thing because obviously I think we all know that. Here's an important one, suppression of the respiratory drive. Super important because it says, in some cases, long-term, this is what I'm always talking about, short-term versus long-term. By the way, there are benefits of using oxygen for the short-term, very short-term. If you guys wanna learn anything about oxygen protocols, I'm not gonna say them right here right now, but they're very short-term, typically like three days, there's different cycles, things like that. You don't wanna use it regularly, but I have found that hydrogen I can use regularly. That's why I wouldn't wanna use Brown's gas because oxygen's always there. Now, it goes on to say, Suppression of the respiratory drive. In some cases, long-term use of supplemental oxygen, exactly what I've been saying, can suppress the natural drive to breathe. This is more common in individuals who don't require oxygen, but use it excessively, you know, because you're using it all the time. So anyway, these are all really important points, guys. Um, I have a, I guess there's another interesting point. I won't go into huge detail. I was also asking, uh, chat GTP about this in regards to it, it was saying things like in summary Brown's gas is a mixture of gases that is used for welding heating and it says while molecular hydrogen which is a colorless ga gas odorless gas with therapeutic effect on various diseases so it seems to know the difference when people don't but again this is an AI system with access to all the information so clearly it's highly intelligent um, here's the interesting one too that I noticed and it was really about permeability and it literally says right here while Brown's gas is a mixture it's not really clear that because of the presence and this is what it says the presence of oxygen affecting its permeability as compared to molecular hydrogen guys this is all really big information I really hope that you found it helpful this was strictly to help everybody out there understand the differences if you really want a full video it would be much longer but if you guys really want it comment below i will go over all the differences in much more detail this was just a very brief video for today so thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel give the video a thumbs up share and subscribe subscribing is free and sharing really helps the word get out a lot of people do not know nor understand the differences between these two things and they think it's the same thing it's not the same thing. So hopefully this video was helpful, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on the next one.